All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, today is the 6th of June. We're going to do some teachable moment plays. So we've got several people who said they wanted to share some plays and hopefully we'll get some other folks who want to uh, volunteer. I'll go, I'll go first. Let me do this. Optimize for video. Um, because of optimizing for video, I'm going to uh, request that you not, uh, not have video on. I'm going to turn mine off here in a second. Did it turn mine off? I hope. Where did my video go? You guys see the video? Uh, Saint Louis, you know, yeah. Western Michigan. Yep. Okay. So, um, all right. So this play is it's an interesting play. It happened last year. Some of you may have seen it in CFC the last scrimmage, guys. So this is a first and ten play. Make sure you. I think I turned the sound off, so I'll be good. Uh, first and 10 play deep in the defense's territory. You guys can't hear the commentary, I hope. Um, so pretty straightforward. It's first and 10, we're at the 16. Nothing stands out particularly about this formation. Uh, we've got two backs. This guy's catching a piece, uh, going back's catching a piece. So H is there. L's got the tailback. Um, nothing terribly unusual here. So quarterback is going to get flushed and roll left, which in both a, an eight official crew and a seven official crew puts the quarterback in not the referee's hands, right? Umpires would take in a seven, somebody who works seven with the umpire in the backfield. The umpire is taking the quarterback now, right? When he leaves the tackle box to the left. Yes. I mean, Nick, regardless of seven or eight, I think referee still needs to have an, op an opinion on where he's going. He may not have eyes directly. He might get some other stuff like that hold that happened, but would still be following the quarterback to some degree. Yeah. I agree with opinion. I, I think the referee should always have an opinion. But is the umpire in a seven, in a seven official crew going to be primary on this? He rolls out to the left. Anyone? Nobody know? If, if they're in the backfield, yes. If, okay. if the umpire's in the backfield, yeah. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. No problem. All right. So anyway, quarterback continues to roll. We're going to have him get hit and the ball come out forward. The ball is going to get touched by the tackle and then roll out of bounds. So roll that last part again. So rolls to his left, hit, ball comes out forward. Clearly touched an attempt to catch by 65, ball rolls out of bounds. Now, a couple of things. Obviously, there's a lot going on here. Let's do it. I throw the beanbag, not because I'm ruling a forward fumble. I, re I regret doing that. I wouldn't have done it again. Uh, but because I needed a spot in case we had to do something. And then I went to the spot out of bounds. I'm not ruling as a line of scrimmage guy. We are not responsible for the pass, right? We don't pass fumbles, not our decision. But with everything that's with everything on this play, I need to have, I've got a lot of things going through my head, right? Because if this is a pass, what kind of problem do I have? If this is a pass, I've got a potential for an illegal touching by 65. Mm -hmm. So we get together, go to the center judge, ask him for his opinion. I don't think this is. I don't think that center judges have, have been particularly used to having to make this decision. So he was a little, a little uncertain. We talked through it. Eventually, we get to the point where the referee makes the announcement, and we rule this a forward fumble out of bounds. And uh, yeah, forward fumble out of bounds. But we left out the part. Um, we left out the part that there is no foul for illegal touching in the pass since the ball was fumbled. Uh, for those of you working in replay, that's important because if replay comes in and reverses this to a forward pass, the rules say we can't create a foul for illegal touching uh, because we didn't indicate that we would have had one if not for the fact that it was a fumble. I brought that up the chain to my my boss who said, or my, my position supervisor who said, if you know there's a foul there and replay reverses it, just make it a foul. I can tell you we don't have rule support for that, um, but I know what I would do in that circumstance. I don't know, and Conrad, you were on this game, weren't you? 
read on replay? Yes, I was on this game. We didn't stop this play, did we? We did not. Huh. No, I was comfortable with the uh, with the fumble. So, yeah, okay. So replay doesn't get involved. So you know we're off the hook for all of that other stuff with the potential penalty. But some some important things to note. You know, I shouldn't have, I I shouldn't have beanbagged it, even though I I was trying to not did I overthought this play. Don't throw the beanbag. You throw the beanbag, it makes like you're rolling, and then we come back with an incomplete pass, and it looks like you know what you're doing. I just should have gone to the spot, which I did. Um, had that information for the potential touch by 65, and then gone and gotten information from the rest of the crew to try to fill in the blanks. Uh, any thoughts or questions on this play? So, um, Nick, on the uh, without the throwing the beanbag, um, that would have been something you could have replayed, right? If you said, yeah, it's the fumble, or I maybe mean, not even really replay, just be like, hey, where did he throw that pass from? You know, or where did that, where did he lose that ball at replay? Can they yeah. come in and help you and be like, yeah, it's at the, he, he, he lost it at the 14 or whatever, whatever yard line. I didn't see what yard line it was, um, uh, but yeah. he lost it at that yard line. Not so much a replay, but like, hey, you know, <laughs> there was a lot going on in this play. Can you help us out with this? I mean, technically, can replay do that? I mean, no, I, yeah, well, I know no, that, but yeah, practically, but, yes. Yes, yeah. I mean, if I we call it, if we say forward fumble out of bounds, we can't just go like, oh, okay, we're just going to make up the spot now, too. Right. Yeah. And I can assure you that from, from our replay booth, we would get that information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. But, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that you would want. Um, Obviously, I didn't. I didn't fly. I didn't. If if we had decided in that huddle that we were have a, a uh, an incomplete an incomplete forward pass, I would have dropped my flag at that point. Uh, but I should have told the referee to make sure that that was part of the announcement in case replay decided to get involved. So those are just things to to be cognizant of. I hate that. I mean, I, I understand that component of it, um, because on the one hand, uh they don't want replay to create a bunch of fouls, but on the other hand, I don't know that I think that it's practical for us to have to announce everything we didn't call in case that something else happened. So I don't know that there's a good solution to that, but also they didn't ask me. So what are you going to do? Um, other thoughts or anything on that play? And it, I would say from a, from a referee and a center judge perspective, this is one of those, it's really good to have that conversation, um, the more and more and more center judges are, are expected to be a mirror of referees. And so in this play, um, I think center judges just need to be ready to be primary and referees are going to be secondary on this in eight man. Uh, in seven, I think I would even, based on how that play developed, I would follow that guy that's coming at my quarterback and I would be primary on that in seven man as a referee. And that includes seven man with the umpire in the backfield? I don't, I would think I would give it up to the, the umpire, but umpires don't make that call enough. That'd be, again, if he's trying to be a mirror of uh, of a center judge, like working in center judge spot, then yeah, I would, I would help. I would expect that. Um, I think sometimes the issue with the umpire with in the backfield with seven man is that there aren't really any, like, there's not really any CFO stuff on it on with the umpire in the back that I, at least that I've seen. So it's kind of like the conference makes it up as whatever if the conference uses it, like they make up their own kind of rules and whatever. Now, from what I've seen is they kind of you treat it as a, as a center judge from the couple that I've seen that do it, but I haven't, but that, that could be a conference thing based on whatever they want to do with it. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Frank, uh, Frank, it's you're you're on for your play, so take it away, man. All right, let me get my screen switched here. Hold on. I'll grab one. All right, can everybody see my screen? No, I cannot. Let me try that again.
Hey, Nick, since I'm having technical difficulties, can you pull the plays up on your screen and I just narrate? Uh, yeah, give me a minute because now I got to go I'm, take them out. Not a problem. I, I, Actually, let's I, I, let's do this. I will find – do me a favor, Frank. In the chat, drop me what uh, weeks these plays are from, and I'll pull them, and we'll go ahead. And Richard, are you ready to go? Yes, I am. Go for it, man. Okay. Um, share my screen. Uh, okay. On the right screen, and share. Uh, share. Okay. Oh. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So this is yeah. from. You got me. Okay. This is from Huddle. Uh, and so a couple of things about this game. It's uh, they're playing divisions, and this is pretty much for the division championship in this game. Uh, it's 12 to six, the red team, which is Shaw University and uh, Fayetteville State has the ball second and eight at the 27, which this will become important later. Um, so uh, we have this play. Big throw down field, bang. So we've got our back judge and our short wing coming in, and then we've got our side judge coming in. So um, what happens with this issue is, uh, and I can run it back a little bit further, the field judge and the back judge have uh, are stopping the clock because they feel like they have an interception. Um, if you can see five, he catches it, he kind of gets hit, flips over, lands and then you kind of and i don't know how easy it is to see on this you kind of see him kind of do a double clutch there um so the side judge has uh he feels he has enough evidence to rule this incomplete so uh it cuts off before um and Kind of this is what this is uh crew communication things um if you as the side judge have something like this and you see that it's incomplete and you see that your other partners are about to rule this complete um and it looks like he's blowing his whistle i didn't remember him blowing his whistle that loud or i didn't hear it but uh, come across the field with more urgency than this um because he rules it in, he says it's incomplete. So when I get down there and when, when I say me, the referee and everybody else gets down there, I see them having a, the, the three deep wings, a long uh, protracted conversation. And, um, and they say, we've got it incomplete, um, which glad this game wasn't televised and didn't have a picture on me when they told me this because everything's moved um you know they've stopped the clock i even i even believe yeah they pointed like as an interception and he's coming across and saying that he has it incomplete um uh fortunate uh, um our my supervisor was on the game on the field at that time and another referee was on the field watching it and they were right behind the side judge, and they said, yeah, it came loose and hit the ground. So we, we got the call right. Um, and this is at Shaw. And as you could tell, uh, um, when we took this interception away and made it an incompletion, um, we have a lot of issues now. Now, um, and I know some of you guys who've worked D2 before and D3, sometimes the chain crew – isn't the super best that you would ever wish for in something. But for this game, we had a pretty good chanker. They were all, I would say, fairly knowledgeable high school officials. So they had the clip right and they had everything right. Um, and I talked to my guys in pregame. Um, I am bad with short-term memory stuff. Like if it's third and five on something, uh, 
lots of times I can't tell you how we got to third and five. It's just one of those things that I don't, I don't remember. Well, I can tell you what happened in the first quarter if we're in the third quarter, but I can't tell you how we got to third and five. And it's just one of those things that I have an issue with. Um, but the chains have moved, everything's moved. So as we're coming back, and this is something you can do uh, as a crew, what to do when <laughs> kind of like worst, worst case scenario, like everything's moved, everything's gone down. How do we get this fixed? How do we solve this? And uh, again, and, and the other thing is it's probably been like downpouring the entire game, as you can see by the condition of the field. Um, I think it's been I think it's been raining the whole day. So um, none of the none of the stat trackers, you know, those guys who keep up with the down and distance and the yards and how many, you know, none of them are on the field. So um, what I do is I go over to the chains. We've got it. OK, we know that it's going to be third down. Because we had we still had second a couple of us still had second on our, on our down finger. We hadn't changed that over yet. So we knew it was going to be third down because of where, because they hadn't moved the, um, clip. We knew it was, the clip was going at the 30, which put the ball, which put the stakes, at the 25 and the 35. What we were unsure about is what yard line exactly we were on. So I went up, I was by the chains talking with them, trying to figure it out. I asked the Fayetteville State coach, hey, where is your stat person? And they said, they're upstairs, you know, outside of the rain. I was like, okay, well, and I asked the coach, well, ask him to tell me what, down, what, what yard line we were on. Because I think we're on the 29. I said 29. Um, and that's pretty much what everybody kind of said to 29, 28, something like that. But I needed to be, you know, can't just say, okay, 29 or 28, you know. Um, so, and I was heading back over to the home side to confirm that they, they said 29. So I was like, okay. And I was heading back over to confirm with the home team that they had third and six at the 29. Um, when I see my line judge skyrocket a flag into the air because they have uh, not treated him well <laughs> on that, which really felt bad because he didn't really have a lot to do with this play, but um, lots of cursing, lots of, you know, uh, telling us we're cheating and things like that and all kinds of stuff. And he had just had enough. He had warned him, I guess. And, and so he threw the unsportsmanlike. And at that point I realized mm, that yard or two really, really doesn't matter <laughs> anymore um, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna throw extra gas on this um we ended up being off by a yard i think we put it at the 28 and then and then moved it up 15 for the unsportsmanlike and the automatic first down at the 43 um of course they you know fable state didn't like throw an interception the next play they went down and scored and tied it and eventually won the game on a on a last second field goal um and these type of plays are how, you know, you get uh, uh, Twitter, you know, the, the losing coach to put a play on Twitter for everyone to see and say how the officials stole it from the kids. Um, but, you know, what I learned from this is use everything possible available to you to get the yardage right. Um, use the, the statisticians. Use the... Uh, uh, you know, the down and distance, the, the, uh, hopefully the stat people are on the thing. Um, when I worked short wing, I had, I had like the guy who had the clip, I gave him a, a little clipboard of like, I want you to write down like every down and distance and yard line. And, you know, if they're good officials, they do that. If they're not, I mean, if they're good chain people, they do that. If they're not, they don't do that, but at least I've given them an opportunity to help us out. I'd open it up. Does anybody else have anything on this play that they see or that they thought we could have done different? How would you have handled it in this situation? Because I'm, believe me, I'm all open to to suggestions on this for uh, teachable stuff. 
well, setting aside the replay components some of us work with. I think one of the things that I used to do, Richard and I, the clipboard's good if you have a clip, uh, but I know sometimes they would only give us three guys to run the chains. I, oh, would yeah, yeah. I would always have the box guy put some tape on the box and I would tell yep. him to, on you know, write the yard line and first down and yep. circle it that we start on. And then every time we have a new series, circle the new first down, or if we replay the down, put a star by it, yep. which, which really pissed off a lot of people that I would work with because a lot of those people could, <laughs> couldn't care less or were baseball guys or whatever. Yep. They do not but, like it, <laughs> but it's certainly, it's certainly something to, something to, to work on. Yeah. Or that they can do. It helps. Yep. And, and definitely would have helped out in, in, in this situation. Um, you know, the, as, as far as an officiating thing, I mean, from, from my supervisor, we got the play, right. It was incomplete. Um, you know, so that was a good feeling to get it right. Um, I didn't have a lot of confidence that we got it right just because of how, of the optics of it coming down and stuff and having them having a prolonged conversation but you know um so i felt better about that afterwards um my only suggestion to the side judge was if you have something that is clearly different from everybody else in the field and you are you know as sure as he was that he was right um is you need to come in harder um and kind of make it known so so that not so much that even the guys that are talking about the play can see you. It's that everybody else, especially on something, you know, that's, that's a bunch of yards uh, to, and that's what we talked about as a crew that day is that, you know, if you have something vastly different from everybody else and you're a hundred percent and you're absolutely sure you need to come in. Uh, I, I think I use the phrase uh, like a house on fire. Um, to make sure that we all stay where we need to be and we get that yard right because we don't want to add anything. Um, and also, I think if I had to do it over again with the missing up of the yardage, I believe I would have talked to the home team coach first because they were the side that was the most upset. And I think if I would have talked to the head coach, I was like, hey, we've ruled this incomplete. It's incomplete. But don't let your actions take this over and make this, you know, irredeemable. I need to know, you know, it was very slow. They've, it was, I trust they've got it right, but we need to know the down, the, the yard line we're on and the down and distance. You can still stop them. It's third and eight now. You know, and they've only scored six points up into this game, so it wasn't like they were lighting the world on fire offensively. And I think if I would have gotten to him and talked to him and calmed him down, and also I have a pretty good relationship with this referee, and I think or with this coach, and it all depends on how you feel about the coaches, and, what, and I know that, but I had a pretty good relationship. I mean, at least I did. <laughs> um, that I could have talked to him and gotten him and hopefully gotten them maybe under control so they don't get that unsportsmanlike. And now it's just now we're now now they feel like we're really taking the game away from them and stuff like that and you know that's that's neither here nor there um but it is it it was it was a really stressful and it you know like you want to get this done as fast as you can but it's but it when it feels like it took as long as it did it's a really stressful situation out there but so does anyone else have anything for this play any questions about this play no All right, Richard. Thank you. Okay, no problem. All uh, right, I'm gonna take this here and. All right, Frank, you're up. All right, so uh, this play uh, kind of puts a the emphasis in this one is going to be um, communication with the crew and a combination of rules, rules, knowledge, and communication. So I'm going to be at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and if you what are so <clears throat> based upon the way um, this formation set up, I would hit the back. Where do you want it? Where do you want it? 
Just make go. So, yeah, you can keep it. You can keep it. So I have the back. Um, he's going to take it and he's going to pitch it here. And the guy who was actually throws the ball is actually the quarterback, but he was lined up as a receiver. So we, in this circumstance, line judge and I are flipping our um, responsibility with regard to mechanics because he um, arguably, it, well, I, I guess technically, no, we didn't because the, um, I, I was downfield on this one. And I had an ineligible receiver downfield, one of the linemen. So if you go back to where the pass is, um, hit, it goes uh, toward out of bounds. This uh, receiver for Indiana State is going to make a play on the ball. That guy right there. So he's, yep, that guy right there. So he's making a play on the ball. So I have a lineman four yards downfield when the pass is, re is released. So what happens in this circumstance is line judge and referee come to me and say, as um, well, the line judge knew what I had. Referee asked what I had. Line judge say, said, hey, he's, he's legally throwing the ball away. So we don't have a foul. Um, I was kind of pleading my case, you know, listen, the re receiver's in a position to try to make a play on the ball. I don't think he's throwing it away. Um, and, you know, therefore we should maintain the foul. Problem is on this, the exception for um, legally grounding the ball doesn't apply because the passer who throws the ball didn't receive the snap. And that's kind of the issue that, you know, we had here is nobody recognized that. Um, so, you know, when the line judge came in and said, quarterbacks legally throwing the ball away, um, he wasn't taking that into account that the exception didn't apply. Um, and it didn't dawn on me until I started watching the film that night um, when I got back to my room. And that's when I sent a text to the guys and said, hey, we, we screwed this one up. Um, so I think in a, in a situation like this, if you're going to come in with information uh, to take somebody off a call, make sure that the information is correct. Um, you know, and the other thing is, you know, just make sure you understand who's throwing the ball, um, you know, because we could have easily cleared this up had we, uh, you know, take a little more time and, and communicated, you know, kind of work down the play a little bit more. I think those are all, those are all really good points. I think that that's a, I can see where your referee probably got crossed up because you said it was the guy that is normally the quarterback that ended up throwing the pass anyway, but he just didn't line up at quarterback, right? That's correct. Yeah, so, if you go back to the um, – he's, he's lined up as a slot receiver on the top of the screen. Sure, but your referee is probably used to, all right, this guy's my quarterback. So he's probably not even thinking about the fact that he wasn't the guy that controlled the snap. So that's why I think the I think the that's why the um, referee got crossed up is because the guy he sees throwing the ball is the guy that he's seen throw the ball, you know, for the first two quarters up to that point. And you know, because of the fact that I recognized that it was going to turn into a pass play with guys going on the field, I ended up flowing. So I didn't I didn't actually see um, who who threw the ball and that there was an exchange there. Um, you know, so that's, you know, I didn't have all the information myself when I threw the flag. Okay. Other thoughts here? I guess from a referee's perspective, I'll just reiterate that, uh, you know, we, we can very easily get crossed up when we have something going through our heads and something, someone comes and interjects with a, Hey, but this, um, it, it gets it's it's be be right if you're going to come in and take somebody off the flag i can't reiterate that enough all right brian you're up yeah it, i agree this is scott i was just going to say that that's a good one frank just to make sure you have all the information and slow down but all good points that you bring up 
before we go with the decision there. <clears throat> All right. Um, so this uh, this particular play is coming out of the MIAA training tape. Um, we're fortunate um, in that every single play that we have a foul on or a no grade remark, we get uh, the, the graders comments on them. Um, and so uh, this play is from my game. Um, I bring this one up and I think it's a good teaching moment because it's going to really affect just about everybody on the field when it comes to it. It's uh, it's intentional grounding. Um, I apologize if it gets bouncy. Um, it does that sometimes when I first play it. I have to come back. There we go. Um, so relatively straightforward. Um, I'll, you don't, oh, there it goes. Like I said, it gets bouncy on me. Um, there we go. Um, it's just the, the how quick it is and everything else. So there's a lot that goes on in this play. Um, nothing jumps out at you in this. If I just stopped it right here, you probably wouldn't say much about it. Um, but when you slow it down just enough to see where the ball lands, um, there's an argument. And this is why we got a no grade remark was, you know, is that a receiver in the area? Is he just dumping it off? Um, what's happening in this play? And so from a position to position side of things, um, looking at this, this is game three of my uh, college football referee career. Um, one of the things that I have learned at several clinics now is we don't really need to be in a hurry to move. I have had, I've slowed my feet down. So you have got to, kind of let as he's retreating if we just hold still we can follow at and see that action even better as opposed to kind of keeping myself in a straight line as i move here so that's a good position comment from you know if you're moving do move to improve as we have heard in several other sports um if you're a center judge um need to feel this action coming a little sooner and maybe not end up right next to it um, but then the conversation between the center judge and i when we see this is you know is he in the pocket is he not um, so we're going to be the first piece of the puzzle and we would say he's in, in this case, he drops straight, straight back, makes no left or right movement. We, we have him in the pocket. Now we have to piece this together from everybody else on the field. We are never going to be able to make an intentional grounding like this, um, our own call. Um, and so from a, from a line of scrimmage perspective, we need to get your information on, did this even cross the line of scrimmage? Um, you can see where I have it, have, have it here. It's third down and six. So this ball lands pretty dang close to the line of scrimmage. Um, so we're going to need your information in there at the very least coming in and telling us, Hey, ball crossed. And then the other piece is, okay, who are we going to rule in the area? If we are, how are we going to do that? So, um, and so who's going to call it? So I want to back it up from the start and we can look at our, and our keys from that side. And I'd like to get the, uh, the line of scrimmage guys and the, and the deeps involved in this part as we kind of roll through your progression on this and um, wh whether or not you would consider somebody in the area. And if you did, or if you didn't, how would you walk through this play? Um, Brian, I think what makes this call a lot harder is the wings have to go to the goal line. And now like, it's just a guess if it crosses the goal, if it crosses the line of scrimmage or not. And um, I mean, it's your best guess, but it's, it's still, it's still just a guess. And um, this is, this is hard to say that, you know, nobody's in the area or, or, or uh, to take off being in the area or not in the area with, with the wing, with the short wings where they're at when the, when the pass is thrown. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. There's this is a the, one of the harder places in the field for this to happen. Absolutely. So, so deep wings and, and short short wings. Anything? Uh, what from this side? What what are you going to bring? What can we do on this play? 
I mean, it lands in an area where, I mean, the guy in the end zone isn't coming back to the ball. So we're only going to give him five yards. You could make an argument that the guy running the wheel route there at the about the six is within five yards where the ball lands, maybe. I, I don't know what other people think, but I think you could make an I think you make a case the guy standing at the five yard line is close enough. Yeah. I would agree with that. I guess then if that's the guy, because I, I think if there's if there is a guy, it's probably him. Um, if there's not a guy, then you know who's coming in to say this is not in the area or there's no one there. So deep wing. I know the back judge is on this call, <laughs> Mike. Um, the uh, like who who would be able to come in here and be able to um, but let's for, for argument's sake, we're going to say this is intentional grounding. Like I said, it was graded as a no greater mark, so it's just something to think about and learn from. For argument's sake, this this is not in the area. Who who would be able best equipped in this to uh, to help make that call? I think the back judge is going to have the best view at this. Yeah, I think the back judge would be able to see that wide receiver crossing at the goal line going away from the ball um, and then would have a after he sees that would have the guy run the wheel route right if he's why if we say he's wider out for intentional grounding purposes, you know he's going to have the best view and ultimately he's going to have to initiate this conversation. Um, in my opinion, not the referee and center judge. The referee and center judge will confirm once, you know, in or out of the pocket once the back judge initiates it. That's kind of my opinion. Mm -hmm. I will tell you as a referee, I am not going looking for you all unless there's something I like. I'm not going to go ask you, hey, was somebody in the area? Because as you see in this a play like this, I'm following my quarterback. I have no idea where that ball landed. Center judge, same idea. We're, we're, we're not going to be able to come looking for that. So from a how we mechanically work through a play like this, don't expect your referee to initiate the conversation. I think that's a great point. It's going to have to come from somebody that says, I have my receiver in the area and is pointing at it. So Nick, to your point, if it's the, if line of scrimmage says, yeah, that's close enough and comes in and points at the, the wheel route, it's like he's in. So we can see it on film. Great. We've ruled. We'll move on. Um, I would argue, and I'd love to have, hear other deep wings, but as a former deep wing, I would argue that with where this crossing route happens, my, my key has now left that spot where he's throwing it to. And so if I'm going to the ball as part of my progression after the, I feel the ball get thrown, I think the deep wing has the best angle at this and would be looking around for who could possibly have gotten that. And deep wing would, would be able to have the best look at was there anyone in the area and would be expect, in my opinion, be expected to run in there and say, I have nobody in the area. Or maybe go to the short wing and say, I have no one in the area. And they're like, okay. Um, I think it's very difficult for deep wings to think about this, or deeps in general. Balls get thrown away, and you're like, damn, no one's there. You have to be able to start that conversation, too. This is not a short wing referee center judge conversation. Deeps can and should get involved, especially on plays like this. So... Yeah, Brian, all Can the you go back to where he releases the pass. This was snapped in the center of the field, correct? Yes, it was position three. I'm going to rescind my previous statement. I got crossed up as to who was on offense because he's it was like white and gray. I don't think that guy's close enough. If the player in white on the real covering the real route was the receiver. I'd say he is close enough, but I think that guy's way far. That guy's almost to the numbers. Yeah. So I'd say he's not close enough. Just going to take that for posterity. To, who's going to say, who's going to save this crew? Go ahead, Mike. I know. Yeah. So um, 
I'll be honest, because obviously, you know, I saw it on the field um, or I was working the play. Um, this didn't even cross my mind because what I'm actually working is possible OPI. Um, you know, I'm staying this second half, so I start with that number two at the bottom. Um, and so, I mean, I remember live, I mean, all I see is a ball hitting the ground. Um, and I have no idea, you know, I actually think I remember thinking that it was tipped. Um, but that, I, you know, as a, as a back judge, I just, I, on this one, I think maybe if my key was coming from the other side, I might have that information. But on this one, I just had, I mean, it wasn't until we got the grades that uh, that even crossed my mind. Well, food for thought for everybody. Like I said, I, I, in my opinion, this is this opens up to the deep wing well enough. Um, short wing can help too, but uh, like I said, it's not just a short wing call. Um, we get that a lot. Like usually, it's dumped close to the line of scrimmage. It's not just a short wing that needs to help us. This is a deep stoop, so uh, that's a good one to to share. Also, Brian, this is a that's a really good play to like talk about in your pregame. We talked about like you know, who has the ball crossing the line of scrimmage and who has, you know, stuff like that when you're at the goal line and it's at the six. I mean, that's that's a, re that's a really tough call for that short wing to come up and be certain that, yeah, it's behind the six or in front of the six. And you're also not going to be helped if you're running with an umpire in the backfield. On a seven yeah, field. right. Yeah. Well, and I think too, it's the important, the other important piece of this, whether it's cross the line of scrimmage or not, doesn't matter if we have them in the pocket. True, 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 true. All right. Thanks. I think the point point there, and I think Nick and Frank, you guys will agree, is that in line of scrimmage, we need to get that, even if you're at the goal line, if it's cross the line of scrimmage or not, and have a strong opinion on it. I think Gary will want us to have that, correct? Yes. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you on that. Yeah, yeah. We need so, to be prepared uh, to do everything. That's the moral of the week. Exactly. We call it on with Gary, so. exactly. All right, Frank, here's your other play. All right, so this is going to be a pass play, um, sideline play. I'm at the top of the screen, so it's going to come to my side. Um, it's a, a fairly and arguably a tight a tight play. Um, and, and the kind of the moral of this one is the, the learn teachable moment is go with your gut and don't overanalyze. Um, so what's going to happen here is I'm going to um, come in and I'm going to rule it a catch. <clears throat> Side judge um, is going to come in and have a conversation with me. Um, because I'm killing the clock. Cause I'm signaling that it's going to be no catch. And we both end up having, a, uh, we both come up after having a short conversation um, and rule it incomplete. And if you go to, I think the end zone view probably shows it better. All right. Yep. Because he's going to lose the football out of bounds. And so what happens here is the side judge says he didn't complete the process of the catch. And, you know, what I, what I ended up doing on this play, um, like I said, is I, I think I overanalyzed it where I started to kind of look from the perspective of, all right, he's stationary. He's got, you know, the, the players opening up to him with regard to um, whether or not he maintained possession when he hit the ground. You know, I'm moving, so my field of vision is a little bit disrupted um, as opposed to being stationary. And, you know, I ended up going with him. And, and what we should have done is took a little more time to discuss what we both had um, as opposed to me just deferring to him. Because ultimately, you know, when you look at the play and you slow it down, uh, you know, the receiver has uh, possesses the football, takes a couple steps before he goes out of bounds. Um, so that, therefore, he ended up completing the process of the catch before. It, this wasn't a situation where you have 
receiver going to the ground needing to maintain possession. Um, he already had completed the process of the catch while he was inbounds. So, you know, don't allow yourself to get talked out of something. Um, if you, you know, feel strongly enough about it, you know, I should have asked more questions of my sideline partner um, and, you know, prolong the conversation a little more so that way we could have gotten this right on the field and not rely on replay. Um, and that's, that's my teachable moment is, you know, if, 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 if you got it, go with it. Frank, um, this is Ken. I, I, I hear you, but that's pretty tough when your partner comes to you like this. Uh, that's that's pretty tough and it's i i backed off on it because of that I, I i mean i agree with you and that's one of the reasons why i backed off because i felt he probably had a better look and you know he's he's a strong official so you know i, I didn't um i get i could have pled my case a little more because my feel on the field was that it was a catch um but, you know, again, if you see, like, I'm moving up field and he's stationary, so I'm, I'm processing that in my head that he's probably got a better view of what everything that happened as opposed to me. But I think it takes two to have a catch and only one to wipe it out. So, you know, the side judge would take ownership of this call. I'm granted he'd be wrong, but, you know, if he came in and <laughs> says incomplete, it's really hard to – come in and say, no, I got it complete without seeing both sides of it. So I, I kind of agree with Ken Cloud there. Um, I also think that this is one of the, like, this is the very best play to like replay, you know, because it's either going to be incomplete or they've got the ball right there at the, whatever, the 28, you know, this is exactly what replay is for with these, with these tough plays like this. You know, it's not, you know, we're not saying somebody stepped out of bounds when they didn't and killed it. You know, it's, it's, it's either caught or it's not. And it, and he's either at the 28 or we're going back to the previous spot. So I, you know, I, this is the play that replay is really made for, for us to get these right. Um, and I wouldn't beat myself up if, if someone talked me out of this and said it was incomplete because yeah, they say the ball's on the ground and then, you know, he didn't complete the process of the catch. I can, I can go with that. And if replay says different then great. Um, but that's, that's my thoughts on it. Yep. I don't I mean, Frank, I thought you guys handled it mechanically pretty good. I mean, look good and confident, but I see your points, but did replay end up overturning this and giving them a Yeah, catch? they, yeah, they did. They overturned it. Um, you know, and this is kind of like you said, uh, or like Gary Arthur said, you know, if you're going to be wrong, be wrong strong. Right. So at least we could look good doing it. Other thoughts on this play? All right. Uh, we had of all the days for our other video service to not be working, Scott had a play that we can't show because we because request is down. Does anybody else, and Steve's not here, so that took out about three plays. Does anybody else have any plays they wouldn't like to share with the group? All right. A little I mean, shorter. Are you trying to so, fill up time? I can yeah, find I mean, a play. <laughs> we don't have to fill time. If there, nobody has anything ready, it's totally fine. We've got, we've got a good discussion from the plays we got in tonight. So I appreciate everybody, uh, everybody jumping on this evening, just to give you a sense of what the, you're looking at the spreadsheet, right? I didn't share the wrong screen. Spreadsheet up. Yeah, we got it. Right. So you can see what's upcoming. Uh, the next presentation will be in two weeks. We're gonna talk about penalty enforcement because I figure that's something we need to hit, especially going into the CFO test. And then we're gonna start talking about the CFO test. Although those dates, those dates in July may be a little flexible. Our clinic is early, is that week of 4th of July, and we're not going to meet on the 4th of July, so we may have to push some things around. But uh, that's kind of where we're looking at for the rest of for the next month or so. Uh, always looking for people who want to present, we'll probably do a more teachable moment stuff as we get a little closer to the season, then we'll have some in-season video hopefully at some point. Uh, hope you're all enjoying uh, being a part of the group and getting something out of the quizzes and, and these meetings and stuff. Uh, and I look forward to seeing some of you in Chicago and, and others elsewhere around the country. But 
that's all I've got for tonight. So thanks for hopping on and everybody have a great week. Hey, uh, Nick. Yep. Um, I had a question of um, the COC, the first quiz from the COC, the first, the first, I think it was 50 questions or something. Yep. There's, there's a question on there that's brought a lot of like thinking about it for me and a lot of like different. Um, it's the one where there's, it's a kick, it's a scrimmage kick. Um, there's a, f a block below the waist by B in the end zone while B's got it. And then A, the kicking team, pushes or blocks B in the back at like the 30. And they said that it, that doesn't constitute a block in the back from the answer that they provided. That doesn't, con that's not illegal. And like the safety, you know, so it's just a safety. So it's a, it's the foul. Was there a lot of argument about that play? Because I've gotten a lot of, I mean, I use, I used it for, I, I come up with the CIAA questions. So I just kind of pick and choose questions that I find. And I use that one. And just, I, some people brought up really good points about that um, question with the block in the back and things like that. And it was like, well, isn't a block in the back blind side if it's a block like that? And I was like, yeah, I, in theory, yes. You know, I know block in the back if you're, and then they were like, well, they're not recovering the kick. It's, I was like, they can get the kick. It was like, yeah, but they're just downing it. That's not recovering. And I was like, I, I guess, <laughs> but it was just a, I was wondering like, you know, and I brought up the, I brought up the thing. I was like, have you, uh, 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 and this is usually what shut them down. And uh, I was like, look, I'm not out here to be like the first ever to do anything. So like, just think about it. Have you ever called a block in the back on K or the defense? like ever in your life or ever seen it, like not in a, like on the, you know, on the snap part of the punt, I guess you could have that, like, you know, but have you ever, and nobody has. So I was like, okay, but so I got that point of it, but you know, it was, they, they, people brought up a lot of good points about that, about how that's a foul and, and, and things like that. Did, you, did, did they get any pushback from that? And a lot of consternation about that question. Did they? I can't answer that because we don't we okay. haven't really discuss them collectively. I would say okay. that probably what you're saying is 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 kind of the the experience I've had, which is yeah. how bad an action would it have to be for us to want yeah. to call it? And yeah. I would and I would I would submit to you that if it's just a something that we would that would just consider a block in the back, probably not going to yeah. flag it anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was. I think it would have. I think that question would have went better if instead of he says block in the back, if he says push in the back, but you know, that's, that's, that's fair. But, you know, I think, you know, cause again, the people who brought up the point were all like, well, you know, blocking in the back is technically blind. I was like, yeah, I mean, I mean, and I guess if he like knocks him to his face then yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't really say all that. So it's kind of, you know, sometimes these questions, I mean, when you get questions, it's what you see in your kind of imagination of it that makes it different. And, but okay. That was, yeah. that was, that was, I don't want to, thanks. What just, which number was that on the test, you know? I, hang on. I, um, let me see real quick. Uh, okay. It's not, not a big deal. Uh, I got it. I think it's, I think it was, it was the first one. And I want to say, um, Hmm. Now I can't. Number of course, eight? now I now I can't find it. It uh, might be eight. Yeah, eight. Number eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number eight in the uh, in the question. Mm -hmm. Blocks A eight. Blocks B eight above. Yep, that's it. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, that was it. Was uh, you know having put it out for everyone to grade it and they were, and they were, you know, a, a lot of people got it, <laughs> which wasn't my, like, I didn't go into there and be like, haha, I've got them all, you know, but um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I, I had, I had difficulty envisioning a situation where I would call that foul. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree with that. It's, you know, it's way away from the play, everything, you know? Yeah. But when people would say like, well, you know, he blocked him, you know, so that meant he put shoulder, I, I envisioned him putting shoulder or, you know, chest into his back and knocking him on it. You know, I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I can, I can see that point of view too. Yeah. 
but yeah okay thanks a lot nick yep i'll see you next time all right guys have a great week